Hello and welcome to Action Film Institute. I'm your host and producer, Robert Barnwell. During today's episode, I wanted to talk to you about some of the wardrobe choices that I made for our special forces operators in our forthcoming movie, Salvation. Essentially, there are three different choices that we need to make when we consider wardrobe. One has to do around the realism. What would our characters actually be wearing? The second issue is, is for production value. What's gonna look best on film? And then third is, what is our budget? And so for our characters, we've actually not concerned ourselves so much with budget because we felt that it was worthwhile to spend whatever was, was necessary to go ahead and make sure that they look the part. So let me go ahead and, and take you through some of the choices that we've got here. Basically, the camouflage uniform that they're wearing is called ATAX. Now, it's worth noting that ATAX is not officially adopted by any of the U.S. military at this point. It's used by certain members of the Special Forces. Um, there's some debate about whether or not it's being used by the CIA's Special Operations Group. But again, I chose this because it's more of a generic look. If I went with the Army um, look, multi-cam, then our characters would be restricted to the Army. The same thing with regard to the Marine pattern or MARPAT. If we got MARPAT, then our characters by necessity would always need to be members of the Marine Corps. If we go with something like ATAX, which is a bit more generic, then regardless of what film short that we're shooting, we can go ahead and use this particular camouflage. Now the next thing is, is our characters are primarily engaged in a fight within the jungles of the Philippines. Now notice what we chose was, when we went and got the ATAX, we got um, a version that they call the arid version, or AU. And AU is primarily designed for use in the desert. But again, if you look at this and you look at the background between the browns and tans and the palm trees, um, and again, the rest of the trees, you'll see that the actual light tan works very, very well. But again, since we're looking at a jungle, we decided that a lot of the accessories were going to stick with OD green. So let's take a look. The ATAX, I want to say we spent about $75 to $100 for the trousers and the blouse. Um, we've got, let's see, our assault vest. I want to say for the assault vest, we probably spent about $70 for the assault vest. It's worth noting that here we also have, this is a real M4 magazine. And what we have here is we've got rounds that we've added to it. These rounds happen to be real rounds, but they're not live. So we went online and we purchased a bunch of these from eBay and Amazon. These began life um, as keychains. So we basically cut the keychain off and now we have the full, we have the full round and we go ahead and we fill the magazine up. And again, it really helps sell the character. Then we took Airsoft magazines and we put them here, but because we've got the flap covering it, you really don't realize that this is Airsoft versus the actual M4 rounds. Now with Charles, Charles currently is an M203 gunner. So let me show you the 203. Basically, this is uh, the grenade that he's carrying. Because he's an M203 grenader, or riflemen, we also had to have pouches that contained the 203 grenades. Now these grenades are actual props from Terminator Salvation movie. Um, we've added some paint because um, originally it was just green and black and the actual 203 high frag has these copper collars that basically when they explode throw off fragmentation. So we added this copper color to make sure that it was authentic as we could possibly get it. Now we also have a headset here. The headset is uh, non-functional. We went out and we bought a uh, foam cover. So again, this really helps sell the effect that it's realistic. And Charles, if you'll turn around, let me go ahead and show what we've got in the back. Basically, we've got um, this radio is a prop radio. I wanna say it set us back about $35. We've got um, the mall backpack that attaches directly to the vest. This was another 35 or 40. And then we have the addition of the antenna. Again, I'd say about $20. Um, Charles, if you don't mind, turn around. Let me um, talk about some of the other things that we may have skipped. So the M4 um, magazine, I'll say that ran us about $15. The individual keychains were about three or four dollars with shipping, and we purchased, I'd say, 20 or 30 of these. 
Um, you'll see that we've got the blood type patch. This is about $5. These grenade pouches were about $15 to $20 each, and, and Charles has got two on either side. He's also got what the military refers to as a morale patch. These patches occasionally designate what team they're on, but oftentimes it's a personal choice by the individual operators. In this case, what we have here is we've got the Punisher um, flag or um, patch, pardon me, and I'd say that was about uh, $10 perhaps. So again, I'd say top to bottom, you're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of $150 per character. Also, I'll note the knee, um, the knee guards, they were about uh, 20 or $30. And they also came with the elbow guards. Now let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at Jamal. Jamal is basically our saw gunner, the M249. And once again, keep in mind that whatever weapon the character is, is gonna carry also dictates a lot of his uniform and wardrobe choices. So, Jamal, if you let us take a look at the front here, we basically have pouches here that show additional magazines for the M249. Um, because of the bulkiness of the 249 magazine, what Jamal will usually do is he'll have a side arm that he'll carry on a drop leg pouch, um, which we don't have here. These again, each individual pouch was about $15. And then on the inside, we have actual U.S. government issue M249 uh, magazines. And these, I'd say, were about $10 or $15 as well. Um, the drop leg pouch, um, or pardon me, the drop leg holster would probably be about $35. So what else do we have that's a little bit different here for Jamal? Um, we've got the sniper veil. This is about uh, 5 to $10 shipped. So again, when you're looking at your wardrobe for your heroes or your protagonists, the three choices that you want to be conscious of are realism, you want to consider production value, what's going to look best on film, and then finally, of course, you need to be conscious of your budgetary restrictions. So I hope this has proven helpful and join us next time when we talk about some of our choices regarding weapons.